America, a country with some of the most brutal criminals in the world. And fighting back are some of the world's toughest cops. Yeah, he's round the back. I had a shot in there. It's a job where murder, drug wars and gun crime are part of everyday life. Come here. A job where doing your duty could cost you your life. They're running, they're running, they're running. Run. We got one. Now I'm joining some of these cops on the front line in the battle against the bad guys. We got him. Yeah. This is New Orleans, the Big Easy. But there's nothing easy about being a cop in this place. He's running. We've got a runner. There, up across the road. Stop. Come here! Get down! Yeah, he's round the back. The police are fighting a war against ruthless drug dealing gangs, and the city is awash with guns. You know you shouldn't be having a gun at 16, eh? New Orleans has the highest murder rate in the country, with a killing nearly every two days. They noticed an AK-47 that was one of the, the weapons used in the shooting. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina blew into town, and the city descended into deadly lawlessness. We got to steal from each other so we can survive and feed our children. It was almost apocalyptic. It was a free-for-all. Now I'm going on the front line with the men and women that will stop at nothing to rid their city of violent crime. Please, come on! New Orleans, Louisiana is nestled in the deep south at the mouth of the Mississippi. It's a beautiful city with a turbulent past. Uptown, the picturesque French Quarter pays homage to its original settlers. But just a few miles away, Downtown tells a different story. Violent crime in the city is amongst the worst in the US, which has led to New Orleans being recently ranked as having the highest crime rate in the United States per head of population. Somebody came and shot you all up in your head, huh? The police face a lot of weapons, with some New Orleanians permitted to carry handguns in their cars and on their person. I'm here to roll with the NOPD Special Operations Unit. These guys are no ordinary cops. They deal with everything from tactical assaults to targeting the city's most violent criminals. Vows, or the Violent Offenders Warrant Squad, are gathering for a briefing in the 6th District. Uh, at this point, we're going to walk through the door, we're going to go out there, we're going to grab these guys, and just make sure that you guys don't, I don't want to end up with anybody getting hurt. Vows has been assigned 37 criminals to arrest wanted for drug dealing in the city. Turn down that address, Troy, please. Officer Fred Faff has served on the New Orleans streets for 15 years and with the warrant squad for four. All right, 10 four. Our main job responsibilities are locating wanted subjects. The warrant's sent to us, and we're, our task is to go out and try to locate that subject and, and put him in jail. The individuals that we're looking for now are drug dealers. So there's, there's a possibility that these people can be armed. Uh, but yeah, we're at the location now. Hold on a second. All right, the gate's locked in the back. I can't do Fred and the unit approach the house and knock on the door. After a short while, they make contact and the lady answers. As the officers search the house for the suspect, they make a discovery. You got something on you, baby? Oh, man, I'm not, no. Put your hand behind your back. Who flushed that coat? What coat? Oh, man, that's the cocaine that's in the bathroom, baby. I don't have no cocaine. There's drugs in your bathroom. In your I don't, turn, okay? I don't sell no okay. drugs. That shit in that tube? Yes. All right, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Exactly. <laughs> 
It's left to Officer Mike Hamilton to recover the submerged drugs, which the suspects have attempted to flush down the toilet. Love of the job. That's suspected heroin. Roughly uh, an ounce of raw heroin. The Vows unit strike it lucky on their first one of the day, and they uncover $50,000 of raw uncut heroin and over $2,000 in cash. With neither of the subjects in the house willing to own up to the drugs, both are arrested and taken to jail. The Vows unit are on the front line of the crime war in New Orleans. Every day they are charged with bringing in the city's most wanted. From armed robbers and murderers to prison escapees and drug dealers. Distribution of heroin. Please, come on! They often face hardened criminals with a lot to lose. So a tough and uncompromising approach is always necessary. Go to jail. The distribution of crack cocaine. Me? As the day rolls on, vows round up 30 wanted criminals and a large quantity of illegal narcotics. Open the front door! Successfully removing drugs and the drug dealers from the city streets. I'm joining Fred for my first patrol with Vows on the mean streets of New Orleans. What do you think about our boys? Our, our cops don't carry guns. There's no way. There's no way that I would go on the street without a gun. You wouldn't? Not here, absolutely not. We, they have criminals all over the country, but in this city, they're savages. They're just, they don't care about anything. Our first warrant is for a man wanted for an assault on his girlfriend and criminal damage to property. But I want to earn my place in the patrol car and prove I'm not just here for the ride. In New Orleans in 2007, there were over 3,000 arrests made for domestic violence. Can y'all push on this gate for me real quick? What, With nobody pushing? answering at the front door, Fred tries to gain access to the backyard to see if there's any sign of life. There it is. Finally, after some determined yeah, police work, we get contact. Come to the front of the house, the police. Hey, yeah. How's it going? Morning. You have a shirt? Yes, I have. I have hey, hey, listen, dude. Yes, sir. Calm it down, here. Yeah? Okay. Take it down or not? I am. I'm, I'm surprised. surprised. Your girlfriend, whatever y'all, what's going on with y'all? She, she put charges on you. We didn't do it. Okay. She did it. Okay. Well, that's a big mistake. You have a warrant okay. on you. Okay, that's why we're here. All right. As the suspect is led from the house, his aggressive nature becomes apparent. Something the sergeant is quick to subdue. This is embarrassing. We treat a man like a rat. Like a what? Like a rat. You're not being treated like a rat. You treat your girlfriend. I did not. Okay, so I come out on the door. I, I would never hit anybody. I, did, did I say you hit him? No. You threatened him. Get your hands on the floor, man. The guy come out. <laughs> Don't treat me like a rat. The sergeant just went, man, we'll put you in a fucking cage. We'll treat you like a rat. <laughs> it was my first case with Fred, and I was proud to have aided in the arrest of a wanted man. <laughs> when I opened that gate, it was like, I can't express the satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> and when Fred said, wiggle the gate, wiggle the gate, I wiggled the gate and it opened up and it just opened up the case. Absolutely, you got that right. So, we could be getting a taser gun or something by lunchtime, I probably. I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana with the Elite Special Operations Unit. Oh, yeah. Good man. When they're not serving warrants on some of the most wanted criminals in the city, they're on SWAT duty, knocking down doors and storming houses. It's my first time at Special Ops HQ, and I'm impressed. The ring in the corner is the unit's proving ground, something I'm going to experience later. When I arrived, they were looking over surveillance footage of the target's house. Perimeter team, you got to take bolt cutters with you and get into that fence. 
Cut that fence and get to the rear. Well, we won't know until we get there. I'm told they're also looking for weapons used for multiple murders and armed robberies. All right, just gonna have them hold on that, wait for the red team to make entry into the house, dominate the house, and wait for the car to move to the back. Because of the dangers involved in the raid, I'm told I won't be allowed to ride with the boys in the SWAT truck. Instead, I'll be rolling with Lieutenant Brian Lampard. All right. As we prepare to leave, I'll receive an update on the surveillance operation at the house. The homicide, I've just said to uh, Brian that the, the guy is there. Six foot odd. Um, got a pit bull and there's a, there's a woman with him as well. So the target is actually there, so this could be really exciting. Let's go, pass it up. Because of the high risk of the weapons being used, the SWAT team need to hit the house in numbers. On this raid, nearly 40 police officers are involved. Let's go, roll out. What, what, what's the dangers here now, Brian? Well, as we discussed in the, in the briefing, this guy's wanted for murder. Yeah. Uh, he obviously has violence in his past, depending on you know how bad he wants to stand his ground. He's got the potential to be a, a violent encounter for us. I don't know how they feel. I've got the adrenaline going. Okay, you can walk away. There's the house there. Should be ready for it. They're all going up the side of the house. SWAT raids are fraught with danger. With a high possibility of a shooting of a suspect or officer, I'm happy not to be first through the door on this one. They're bashing the front door in. They're going in, they're going in now. They're all in there now. Everybody's inside, has a lot of shouting and screaming. It was tense in the car as we waited outside for an update from the SWAT team. Are you holding the, uh, the target? I got over one female. Here comes a woman. There's a lady come out. Red the front. team to blue team. Red team leader, we're making a move upstairs. Corey, get in. With no sign of the upstairs. target, I'm allowed to move forward towards the house. It was really quick. I mean, they literally was here, up the side, round the back, through the front door. Really effective. Really, really good. They've got one woman in there. So whether the guy got out or what, I don't know. But the trouble is, when they're coming in, they've got so many of these kids on corners with cell phones, I think they get tipped off. That's the battle. These guys, you know, they've got, got, they've got lookouts on the corners on the cell phones. So whether he's out and gone, the car's still here. She's over there still screaming and shouting, so we'll have to wait and see. With the house now safe, I went in to see what the team are up against. Stinks of dogs. Another. There's two more dogs in there. One come out. There's a pit bull around the side. <coughs> Officer Chad Ganyon was first through the door. You never know what you're going to get. I mean, uh, you know, the warrant is a homicide warrant, so you know you're going after a guy who's already committed a homicide. His potential for violence is very high. You never want to see those days where you know, one of us don't come out of the house. You know. Even though the target wasn't in the house, the SWAT team recovered a weapon used in a double murder. The gun will eventually be destroyed, along with the estimated 2,300 firearms the NOPD recover every year. I'm impressed watching the unit in action. These guys know what they're doing and are clearly very good at it. I'm disappointed not to have gone through the door with the team, but they've told me I can prove my worth to the unit in an initiation test that they have planned. <laughs> my reputation precedes me as a bit of a hard man, so they've told me I need to face one of their tough guys in the ring. To them, I'm Hollywood. But they don't know I've recently spent six weeks in a gym training for my last movie. Oi, I'm the only traveller who's won six years in a row. I've done um, the Strength and Honor movie with um, with Michael Madsen. And I was in the gym for six weeks and uh, really got into it. And you realise how hard it is. I'm ready to fight, but then Jeff, the unit's prize fighter, steps through the door. Jeff? How you doing, man? Yeah, it's good to meet you. Hey, man. Hopefully he's got an extra thick head guard for me. Absolutely. And he takes it easy on me. Nah. Because <laughs> we've got to work tonight. And this has become precious now, so. What are you, 220, Jeff? 
Ferdy? Wait. Yeah. 265. 265. There you go. And I've just I've just lost about 12 pounds. As I'm giving up a weight advantage, I'm going to have to draw upon my speed and nimble footwork to get through this fight. Whether that will last for two rounds is doubtful. I'm sparring for the honor of the SWAT team. <laughs> Fighting for Britain. Flying the flag for Britain. Nervous. We'll see. As long as you don't put me on my ass, I'll be fine. If he does, I'll cook him in the bollocks anyway. I'm aware of this. In case he throws a low shot, I'll, uh, I'll still be able to have some kids. <laughs> this is my chance to prove myself in front of the boys. And they've all turned out in force to see Jeff take me down. I don't know. Like, this is going to be a close one. I don't know how the man can do it, but the young buck can hit hard. I know that. I started well, managing to get a few good jabs in. But then my fitness started to tell. The legs couldn't keep up with the heart and Jeff got through my guard. <laughs> he caught me with a leg wobbler right on the chin, but I managed to stay on my feet to hear the bell. Don't tell Vinny now, but if he beats Roach, we're gonna book him. He's going to jail. <laughs> Fucking out of shape, dude, I tell you. Got to wait on you fucking moves. I have to admit, Vinny's fighting a better fight than what I expect. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I got some grab in. I came out fighting in the second and gave it me all. I'd given it my best shot. I was just happy not to be lying flat out on me back in front of the boys. Jeff saying I'm coming in a bit low there. He was waiting for me to throw it, but caught me one where Ooh. I, I'd have to take the first round because I because I caught him with that hook. Vinny's gonna have to take the second round because he uh, he put a few punches together on me I couldn't defend. So uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely call it a definitely call a split decision. You know he might have threw the fight because he uh, you know he didn't want to go to jail. Yeah, that's I might not have won but I earned their respect and a place alongside them for the notoriously eventful night shift. But the dangers for the unit in New Orleans today pale in comparison to what they faced in 2005. That summer, New Orleans was hit by a storm greater than any before. Hurricane Katrina gained pace over the Caribbean Sea before unleashing all its fury on the Big Easy. The sea level rose until the levees couldn't take it anymore. These streets are, look like rivers and canals. Almost immediately, more than three quarters of New Orleans was under five feet of water, and 70% of the city's police officers became homeless. I'm lost. That's all I had. That's all I had. Jason Samuels was one of many NOPD officers that stayed in the city to help its citizens. It was almost apocalyptical. Probably 85% of the city was underwater, at least three to four feet, which you had families uh, stuck and needed rescuing. And then the other 15% that was out of water, you had millions of people heading that way to basically steal what they wanted, what they needed, or just try to find safety. They said, send everybody to the Superdome. That was horrific. There was murder, there was suicide. Conditions that were so horrible that I had to get out. More than half of the city fled. But with New Orleans in its hour of need, Jason knew he had to stay. He regrouped with the rest of the unit in a nearby school. I mean, you basically learned a survival mentality. We went and found stores that maybe weren't flooded where we were able to get socks and, and some type of food stuff, canned food and everything, to where we were able to sustain ourselves until help arrived. Jason and the Special Operations Unit patrolled the city with the army rescuing those in need and recovering the bodies of some of the estimated 2,000 people that died. 
Local law enforcement is awesome. You know, they're routinely running through about every 10 minutes. So. Amazingly, Jason did all this with an open gunshot wound in his leg. Just over a month before Katrina hit, he was involved in a shootout with a fleeing criminal whilst on duty in the city. The gunshot wound in my, uh, my groin area had never closed, so I was constantly bleeding. My left leg swelled up to probably uh, two to three times its normal size. The pain was such that I would crawl to uh, you know, where my boots were or whatever and get dressed, and I just put on my gear and went to work. Even now, the city is still recovering, but the heroics of Jason and his fellow NOPD officers will always be remembered. As far as American police, I don't think there's any other unit that's been through what we've been through. It was akin to uh, guys going overseas to war together. Without a doubt, the special ops unit excelled in the city's time of need. And listening to the heroics of Jason makes me proud to be serving alongside them. But as I was about to find out, when night falls, the challenge of being a cop in New Orleans becomes even greater. I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana, a city blighted by drugs and illegal firearms. I've seen the Special Operations Unit in action looking for weapons. They're going in, they're going in now. And arresting drug dealers. But the frontline policing is done by TAC patrols, who roam the city's toughest neighborhoods, tackling crime as it happens. That's not mine. Don't we'll be playing no games. I'm playing no games. Officer Christian Frick is heading to one of the city's most crime-ridden neighborhoods. Tonight we're in the fifth district, and we're going to uh, look for uh, some uh, no drug hotspots. Uh, we'll see what we can uh, shake up in the neighborhood, and uh, hopefully we can get uh, a few of these uh, troublemakers off the street. The night is still young when Frick gets a call to assist other officers on the scene of a triple shooting. Yeah, this is actually going to be the scene right here on the left with all the news cameras. What's the Frick, Unity? What's the Frick? Black man, shoot. On the scene, Frick discovers that three men in a 4x4 drove past and sprayed everyone on the pavement with an AK-47. One of the victims is a 16-year-old boy. The crime actually happened right here by the car where all the cones are. From there, once the shots rang out, the victims probably ran over to this tire shop, at which point they were hit, and unfortunately one's, uh, one's down, and uh, he's been pronounced dead on the scene. Yeah, probably hit Away from the murder scene, the chase for the killers continues. Officer Frick gets information that the car used has been abandoned nearby after a brief chase. All three subjects bailed out of the vehicle, and fortunately for the police, they left the, the, the AK-47 inside the vehicle. Officers caught two of the perpetrators as they ran from the car, but one still remains at large. As Christian returns to the car, he gets a call that the remaining wanted man has been spotted. All right, Marie and Come on. We got a guy uh, fitting a strip of this 34 S of the shoot. He just ran across the street here. He's gonna uh, bunker down now. We got this perimeter set fairly quick over here. And we're going to stop right here. This is going to be our corner. We're going to get out on this corner here. Set up this perimeter. As the killer darts through the gardens, the units in the area quickly cordon off the block that he has last seen him. We're going to have a solid perimeter on this guy now. Uh, the subject uh, crossed uh, one street. Now he's going to be in this street here. The K-9 unit arrives and searches the area, but unfortunately it fails to pick up on the perpetrator's scent. The search is hampered by the number of empty houses left over from Hurricane Katrina that act as good hideaways. They could go anywhere in these abandoned houses. 
And uh, on that last block, there was only two houses that people were actually living in. After looking for over an hour, the search is eventually called off. With two suspects in custody, getting the name of the third won't be difficult. What you doing, bro? Uh -oh. However, for Christian not to find the suspect is still frustrating. It's aggravating. I mean, you got, we've been out here for an hour, you got numerous uh, officers out here concentrating on this area, and we can't do anything about it. Now, 30 rounds. Clearly, when the sun goes down, the criminals come out to play, and the job of the police becomes even more difficult. The following night, I hit the streets with Officer John Barbetti, who has survived many close encounters. Much controlled, but, you know, there's murders every day. Your first gunfight, how did that come around? It was interesting. We had an informant working with us, and uh, he said there was going to be a deal going down, and uh, we were going to try to jump it around, and uh, it ended up into uh, turning into a gunfight right then and there. What, he, he jumped out with the gun? Um, yeah, two passengers and the driver all had guns. How long ago was that? That was um, in 2000, 2001. You've had a few more since then, have you? Yes. I'm slightly worried I might be going on patrol with a bullet magnet, but thankfully we're hitting the ghetto in numbers. You got anybody with you? We're traveling in a special tactical group known yeah, as the Wolf Pack. A gang of cars that stick together to flood a particularly difficult area. All we do is uh, mostly proactive kind of work. Try to stop it before it happens or, or while it's happening. This is uh, the Ninth Ward area. A lot of chasing, uh, a lot of weapons violations, and, uh, heavy into narcotics. He's going to stop this guy right here. Check him out. We kind of watch his hands, see what kind of movement he does. I'm learning that working as a street cop requires a different set of skills. Do we make you nervous? You all right? You sure? Your heart's going 100 miles an hour. The tactical units act on instinct, identifying who to stop. Stand right next to the guy. Seeing Barbetti in action, I'm picking up how the wolf pack operates. Then a call comes through on the radio of another unit needing assistance. Bring you guys over here to the 4,000 On the scene, a young suspect is in custody, and then I notice why. Fuck. You had that gun? Yeah. What you carrying a pistol for, bro? Officer Wagger's pack was first on the scene, so I asked him what happened. We saw the subject emerge from the corner on the bicycle. He hopped off the bicycle, started fleeing on foot, digging in his pocket like this, believing he had a, was concealing a weapon, concealing a firearm. We hopped out, we started ordering him to stop. He continued running. As he got about up into this area right here, he removed the firearm from his pocket, tossed it onto the concrete here. Officer Boudreaux tased him, and he was quickly subdued. How old are you? I'm 16. 16. Unbelievably, the suspect cycling around with a loaded gun isn't even old enough to watch one of my films at the cinema. 16 years old. As the case unravels, the armed cyclist provides a novel excuse as to why he's carrying a gun. He said he chased a chicken under the house. He missed the chicken and found the gun and the bullets under a house while he was riding his bike. <laughs> <laughs> As excuses go, this one ranks right up there. I went to speak to him to see if there were any holes in his story. What happened with the, with the gun? Where did you find the gun? Over there? Not over there, the street. What, was a chicken under that house? I was chasing a chicken. What, why were you chasing a chicken? I sell a chicken. You get the money, buy me clothes and You get $10 a chicken. $10 a chicken? How many did you get in a day? Huh? How many did you get? I ain't catching it. I found the gun. I was go sell it. Are you quick enough to catch a chicken? Yeah. You sure? You know you shouldn't be having a gun at 16, eh? I already know. Why didn't you? You should have just stopped the stopped the policeman and just gave him the gun. So look, I just found this gun. Then you wouldn't be in no problems. I won't get no reward for that. Look at your reward now, then, huh? You know what I mean? You're gonna have this forever now, dude. In order to stop the chicken chaser from fleeing, the officers deployed a taser device. This temporarily stuns the suspect with 50,000 volts of electricity. 
Is that the first time you've been tasered? First time I ever got a chopper like that. Did that hurt? Shaking like a chicken. <laughs> you were, yeah. <laughs> Shaking like a chicken. Maybe we get $10 for you then. <laughs> yeah, you made all these policemen come out here. <laughs> Have a seat right there, man. The kid's funny, but I doubt how honest he's being. I know. In your lens, even 16-year-olds are involved in serious crime. He's not going anywhere. I mean, a lot of the armed robberies and stuff like that, and even nowadays, the murders, are the, the perpetrators are getting younger and younger. So who knows what he, had, what he had on his mind, you know? Watching the wolf pack deal with the armed cyclist, it helped me understand the challenge these cops face, and rolling with John and the boys is starting to get me thinking more like a cop. Is this you? Yeah. Mm. He's on the Jennings, As the night wears on, we're coming up against more and more guns, and I start seeing what the cops are up against each time they step onto the streets. Two guns, two stops, two guns. It's an eye-opener to be riding with John and the Wolf Pack, witnessing firsthand the dangerous job they do out here. We received a call to respond to yet another stop and search when the unit ahead spots a suspicious car at the junction. Bar Betty tells him just in case he needs backup. Then a simple stop and search turns into a car chase. He's running. We've got a runner. We've got a runner. We're travelling at nearly 100 mile an hour on a dusty back road, but still the suspect's car ahead is leaving us in a cloud of dust. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, we're chasing a car right now. He's um, running from the police. He's got to watch his intersection. So dusty, we can't see a lot. Up ahead, the criminal's car turns right. So John takes an earlier road to see if we can head him off. We're parallel on him right now. See if we can cut him off. As we wait for the car to emerge, the chasing unit radio, and they tell us that the wanted men have crashed and are now on foot. Is he running, John? Yeah, he's on foot. This, he's right out here someplace. Keep an eye on behind. Yeah. 5400 block. You're talking a 5400 block. I was scouring the houses looking for a sign of the two criminals. There, there across the road. Just ahead, I spot one of them run in front of us, and he heads into the bushes. In there, huh? Yeah, he cut across. He's on Royal, Royal. 2100, going toward, back toward St. Claude. Stop, back up, go back! Two stops, two stops, two stops. Come here! Get down! Get down! Get down! With Barbetti in the bushes chasing the suspect, someone needs to get round the side and head him off. Yeah, he's round the back. I need to set up a perimeter. Somebody need to call out the name. What it was. You got him back there? Thankfully, another unit was there to tackle him. Otherwise, I would have had to notch up my first takedown. What other way, man? What other way? What? But there was still one fugitive at large. I think there's another one. Is there another one? I saw the fucker run behind us into the bushes. <laughs> Is there another one? Yeah, there's going to be one more. We got the driver so far. K9 has already been called, bro. K9 has already been called. I'm gonna put him on this side, bro. Yeah, y'all hold that uh, corner right there. You can back it up right there. Oof, that was the real stuff. John just said to me, "Keep an eye out behind." I look behind. I just see him run across the street behind us. When he was going so fast, any little kids, anything, yeah, they just killed him. You got him. 
<laughs> they got the one, yeah. Yeah, we flushed it. The one we saw coming. I saw him. I couldn't get back to that fence fast enough. I got, I got wailed in the face with a tree branch. I just saw him out of the corner of my eye, just running I across like, the street. I was a good one. I said, I looked back and I saw you. I was looking at him. <laughs> While we wait for the canine unit, I go to where the car crashed to find out how the chase ended. Here's the skid marks right back here, look. And there's the skid there. So they've gone through there. Try to rectify it. Lucky it never went through the house. I think they, there must have been a cop car here, so they've just they've, they've spun it in here. There's one of the hats there, so the other guy's saying he was the he was the in the passenger seat, but looking at this, it looks like he was the one we got as the driver. Uh, they're checking it. It's stolen. It's gonna be stolen. You stole the car? He stole the car. He picked me up. K9 arrive on the scene and I direct them into the block where the remaining fugitive was last seen. Yeah, John chased him across this street. This one came into here, the one they caught. So the other one might be in the other block. Yeah, did y'all see him? You saw him come out? We scour through gardens and search the abandoned houses, not knowing what we might uncover. My heart is in my mouth. Yeah, they don't know whether he's got a gun or not. They didn't find a gun in the car. So that's why everywhere they look, they've, they've got the guns out first. A million places to hide. After over an hour of meticulous searching, the K9 unit call it a day. We went into every garden. Dog never picked up anything. Car's pretty smashed up, as you saw. That's nearly a right off, I'd imagine. But you did a good job spotting them. Yeah, we spotted them all right, but yeah. just frustrating we never got the other one. Yeah. But it was good eyesight, and uh, led to an apprehension. Yeah. Thank God we were close, and there's one less criminal on the street. But there's so many places in there to hide, man, I tell you. I'm proud to have helped John and the Wolf Pack get an arrest, but it's sad to see yet another young teenager in the hands of the law. After the adrenaline of the chase wears off, I'm left feeling thankful that this time no weapons were drawn and that the boys can all head home tonight. I'm in New Orleans in the deep south of the United States. It's been a privilege to roll with one of the best units in the NOPD. Witnessing firsthand the challenges they face and helping them to apprehend the bad guys. Yeah, he's round the back. For my last night, I'm teamed up with Sergeant Dave Duplantier, a local New Orleanian who joined the police after growing up in the hood. How long have you been in the force and why did you join, Duff? I've been on a little over 18 years now. and. Uh... I was always curious about police work, but I was always kind of on the other side. I, was never, I, was, I wasn't a bad kid by any means, but you know, you do things that teenagers do, so. And we hung out a lot, so we got stopped and checked out a lot. You know, there used to be at least a code amongst criminals and, and, and that bad seed of the world, you know, where they, they would deal with each other, but they kind of left the elderly and, and, and the innocent out of it. Not anymore. Even though Dave knows the ghetto better than most, he understands he can't take any situation lightly, and all the units must stick together. Not everybody in these neighborhoods are bad, but you got that rough element in the neighborhood. And even those that aren't bad, they're gonna side with their blood, they're gonna side with their family. And we're not family. For instance, the neighborhood, see how many people will be out there, how many threats that are around us. It can become a pretty hostile situation. But then they're the first ones to call you guys. Yeah, one on the inside, as we drive through the city, Dave receives an urgent call and the lights go on. Talk to me, where you at? What was that, though? They got a guy running on foot and boarded on him. Uh, they got a little 75. The worst call a cop can get is to hear a fellow officer is down or is struggling with a suspect because he knows to get away, he will have to use any means. Right now they got a, uh, they got a fight going on. With some officers? Yeah, they got some officers involved. 
good? Everybody good? When we arrive, the area is flooded with cops to control the situation and three suspects have been apprehended. I'm told that as the officers went to apprehend the suspect, a gun was pulled. Might be easy to get home. And after a brief struggle, it was thrown into a nearby alleyway. The number of units is justified, as this street corner is at the centre of a gang war. The suspects arrested are most likely gang members, armed and ready to protect their turf. After checking the rear of the property, Dave makes an alarming discovery. Poor man's version of a Benelli. The gang had hidden a laser-sighted semi-automatic machine gun in the back garden. A sign that gang wars in this city are the real deal. In Yulins, because many lawful citizens are permitted to carry and own guns, they are often taken in robberies. In the US, it's estimated that nearly half a million are stolen every year. With three suspects in custody and two weapons recovered, including a machine gun, the night's work would seem a success. I'm not in no beat. You violate me bad, man. You got me bad. But the challenge of dealing with so many young people with guns is troubling. Get a gun. So calm. Thank down. All right? Look around. Look at everybody right now in these cars and in handcuffs. Look at, look at their faces. They're kids. They're children. And you see the hardware that they're carrying out there. The rifles, the guns. That's the frightening thing, yeah. They got no... Yeah, they, you know, they pull the trigger. They don't know the consequences, what they're doing. Mm -mm, they don't. And people out there, they're killing each other like crazy, you know? That's the world we live in, you know? That's just how it is right now. Say it. It's estimated that up to 50% of teenagers drop out of high school across the state, and many turn to crime to get by. They look so innocent when you arrest them, don't they? The only thing you can tell them is death or jail. And guess what? They don't care about either one. Jail is almost like graduating from college for kids out here. It's, 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 it's a pin on their shirt. So they don't care about that. They just go do their time, learn in jail, and come back out and keep doing it. As we leave yet another scene where teenagers have been arrested and weapons recovered, I'm left thinking that the job of Dave and all the cops in New Orleans is one I couldn't deal with day to day. Just like in one night, let alone, you know, one week, the amount of guns that the lads are getting and the amount of guns they have to deal with and that threat, I just find phenomenal. The, the gun situation is out of control. It really is. Well, I mean, I've been doing this 18 years and I, I, I still sometimes ride around and I just... You know, every now and then you just kind of get awestruck with the amount of weapons that you see on the street. This is just a city where young, old, everybody's carrying a gun. Yeah, it's almost like the wild, wild west. It's a hard-hitting final night on patrol with the special ops well, unit. But with cops like Dave and the boys out here, New Orleans is certainly a better place. I've grown to appreciate the tough job they do. To understand it takes a special person to do this day in and day out. So basically that's our time now up in New Orleans with the, with the SWAT boys and everybody. And uh, I've got to say it's been really enjoyable. I found that the longer we've been here, the more they sort of bring you into the group. And um, what's come out of it for me is how tight they are and how they all rely on each other. The shocking side of it all really for me is, is the amount of young kids, you know, 16 year olds walking about with a gun, you know, full magazine loaded, ready to go. It, you know, great learning curve and full of excitement, um, great adrenaline rushes on the car chase especially. You know, you never know if someone's gonna run out or anything, you know, and you're doing 100 mile an hour through these little streets. That was quite hairy. You know, it's been a great experience, and it's it, and I think it's taught me uh, to to basically for me to respect the law a lot more. Next time, I'm in Los Angeles, and I'll be rolling with the LAPD special gang unit. I have nothing at all. Yeah, he's admitted that he's took it now, but um, he still won't tell him how much. The most dangerous place on earth. We're way back up. Could have been the bullet in the side of the head, you know.